You know what's crazy? Despite touching the lowest price points of the year this week, while going through the news stories for this episode, there were a ton of global bullish crypto adoption stories. What does it mean? People, companies, investors, institutions, they are building in the bear market. Hello, I'm Crypto Casey, and welcome to another episode of Crypto This Week. Every Sunday, we explore the latest global news stories affecting the crypto markets, as well as the ever-changing macro environment of the world at large. Be sure to check out our sponsors below, Afani, NordVPN, and iTrust Capital. Protect your cell phone from SIM swapping attacks using Afani's secure mobile services. Protect your data, privacy, and crypto investments by using virtual private network services with NordVPN. And protect your future by opening up a tax-free crypto individual retirement account with iTrust Capital. Check them all out using the links in the description area below. Beware of scammers pretending to be me in the comments below as well, asking you to WhatsApp them, Telegram them, join an investment group, use their investment services, asking you to send them money, crypto, in your wallet seed phrases. All of those are scammers trying to steal your crypto. The only links to my only official social media profiles are listed in the description area below of these videos. Anything not listed below is 100% a scammer, so stay vigilant in these crazy times, crypto fam. Awesome, let's hit crypto this week. U.S. inflation quickens to 40-year high, pressuring the Fed and Biden. Consumer price index rose 8.6% in May annually, 1% from April. Shelter, food, and gas were biggest contributors to advance. U.S. inflation accelerated to a fresh 40-year high in May, a sign that price pressures are becoming entrenched in the economy. That will likely push the Federal Reserve to extend an aggressive series of interest rate hikes and adds to political problems for the White House and Democrats. Ouch. Inflation numbers did come in much worse than the market anticipated, once again causing downward price movement across the market. And like clockwork, every month another Fed meeting is around the corner. The Fed will raise rates in the week ahead. But what Chair Powell says may matter most. The Fed is widely expected to raise the Fed funds rate by half a point Wednesday and again next month. But Friday's very hot consumer inflation report sparked expectations policymakers could hike faster and higher. So next Wednesday, June 15th at 2.30 p.m., whatever Fed Chair Jerome Powell says about the summer and fall interest rate forecasts will at some level set the course of the market over the next few months. With the higher anticipated inflation numbers, less than a 50 basis point rate hike this month and next month is likely off the table, rendering Kathy Wood's prediction we covered in a previous episode also off the table, while a more bearish possibility was just put on the table. Barclays, traders set sights on Fed rate hike of 75 basis points. Markets price 50-50 odds of bigger increase in July and September. Barclays and Jeffries economists see a three-quarter point hike next week. Ouch. Fed interest rate hikes are looking like they may come in much worse. So it's definitely looking like the Fed's inflation mission has a recession destination and hard landing for stocks. After years of propping up stocks, the Federal Reserve is now faced with the tax of piercing the wealth bubble to dampen inflation. But deflating the bubble lands the economy in recession, likely forcing the market to shed about a fifth of its value. Ouch, a recession is looking more and more likely. Leave it to Cardi B to pop the question that's on everyone's mind. When y'all think they're going to announce that we're going into a recession? And I can tell you exactly when her question and our question will be answered. Mark your calendars for July 28, 2022 at 8.30 a.m. This is when the U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis, or BEA for short, will release its advanced estimate of our GDP, or gross domestic product, for quarter two. What's so special about it? Well, most economists describe a recession as two consecutive quarters of declines in GDP, or gross domestic product. On April 28, 2022, the BEA released its advanced estimate for our GDP for quarter one which was negative 1.4%, the first negative quarter since the second quarter in 2020. And this week, the Fed GDP tracker shows the economy could be on the brink of a recession. The Atlanta Federal Reserve's GDP Now tracker is now pointing to an annualized gain of just 0.9% for the second quarter, down from an estimated 1.3% increase less than a week ago. Quite a sharp fall in just one week. And when considering we have about seven more weeks until the real number is released, and when also considering increasing inflation and two more likely bearish Fed rate hikes, it's quite likely that we experience a second consecutive negative quarter, 
which means a popular, widely accepted definition of a recession. Between money printing, quantitative tightening, inflation, rate hikes, recessions, what do all these problems have in common? The Fed. Savage Ben Henrik gives us all something to think about in this tweet. Maybe creating the Fed was the original policy error. The tweet also shows a graph of purchasing power significantly and steadily declining since the inception of the Federal Reserve. And as a supposedly separate and independent entity from the government, who performs checks and balances on the Fed? Who's keeping them honest? Yeah, I don't know either. But a fellow member of our crypto fam is taking aim. This week, crypto bank Custodia sues Federal Reserve. The bank founded by Morgan Stanley veteran Caitlin Long filed suit against the U.S. Central Bank for delaying a decision on its application for a master account. In the filing in the United States District Court of Wyoming, Custodia accused the Federal Reserve Board of Governors and Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City of delaying the application process by 19 months and called the master account critical to Custodia's business. Such an account would allow Custodia to directly access the Federal Reserve rather than going through an intermediary bank. Custodia said in the complaint, it also accuses the Fed of adopting standardless procedures that allowed it to act in complete secrecy whenever and however they choose. The suit said the Fed's own paperwork says a master account decision ordinarily takes five to seven business days and that the processing delay had clearly violated the one-year statutory deadline for doing so. Why the delay? Perhaps because blockchain technology would prevent the Fed from operating off of standardless procedures and acting in complete secrecy whenever and however they choose? Yeah, glad someone is calling out the Fed. At the end of the day, the Fed's standardless, secret actions are the main driver of the crypto markets. So we have to pay attention to what they've got to reveal every month when they emerge from their secret lair. In other news, a potentially bullish regulatory event could be around the corner. This week, a proposed bipartisan U.S. crypto bill could be a sigh of relief for the industry. All around the world, regulators are trying to address the trillion-dollar elephant in the room, the digital assets market. Because crypto is a nascent industry that currently exists largely outside of legal frameworks, it's still in murky waters, and those in the industry and outside of it seemingly want clear guidelines and clarity to move forward. A proposed crypto bill sponsored by U.S. Senators Cynthia Loomis, Republican of Wyoming, and Kirsten Gillibrand, Democrat of New York, aims to install guide rails around the digital asset space. The 69-page bipartisan bill is comprehensive and addresses many corners of the crypto markets. Some of the aspects of the bill include tax-free crypto transactions under $200, guidelines for differentiating cryptos as commodities versus securities, backing stablecoins with one-to-one monetary currency for 100% cash reserves, and much, much more. Cool. A quick update on the Ethereum merge. The Ethereum Robson testnet successfully merged to proof-of-stake this week. However, there still may be a delay of the actual merge due to a delay in the difficulty bomb, which is just a part of Ethereum's code to help transition the network from proof-of-work to proof-of-stake. As developers discuss taking time to iron out various bugs they encountered when running the software or the merge on the Robston testnet. Definitely better to be safe than sorry, and delays in Ethereum upgrades are nothing unusual. In fact, they are quite usual and to be expected in all massive software ventures. All right, as usual, let's rally through some bullish stories from the Newsweek, starting with big traditional financial institutions. Bloomberg expands its crypto coverage to the top 50 assets. Instead of covering updates about 10 cryptocurrencies, Bloomberg Terminal will now include the top 50 ones. Also, Wall Street's largest banks are tapping into the crypto market through derivatives. Nice. In addition, we've got big traditional players piling in. Billionaire adoption rate of crypto nearly double the average. And we've got other big investment firms. PwC's survey sees more hedge funds investing in crypto in spite of volatility. Of traditional hedge funds surveyed, 38% are investing in digital assets, up from 21% a year earlier. The number of specialist crypto hedge funds is estimated at more than 300 globally, with their pace of creation accelerating during the past two years. Sweet. And we've got big traditional merchants coming in hot. American Express adds first crypto product with Abra Rewards Card. A long time in the making, the Abra crypto card will be the first AMX cryptocurrency product said Abra CEO Bill Barheit. Nice. And another merchant that has been trailblazing in the space, PayPal mounts crypto offensive after New York grants a full license. Users can transfer select coins with other wallets and exchanges. 
PayPal sees a long-term adoption of crypto and payments despite the downturn. And credit unions are joining the space as well. Located in the northwest of Tampa, the Dunedin, Florida-based Achieva Credit Union became the first credit union in Florida to offer Bitcoin services to its members. According to a statement released on Wednesday from the $2.6 billion credit union, its more than 160,000 members can use Achieva's mobile app to make Bitcoin transactions. And we've got other types of payment businesses entering the scene. Getting money into crypto is still hard. Stellar and MoneyGram have a fix. Consumers will soon be able to convert fiat money into crypto at MoneyGram locations worldwide, opening up access to people without bank accounts or credit cards. Cool. And if you've been tuning into previous episodes, this industry refuses to get left behind as well. Fashion company Farfetch joins other luxury giants in crypto payment adoption. And more celebrities are taking the stage in our crazy crypto world as Anthony Hopkins adopts Ethereum name and asks Snoop Dogg what NFT to buy. The Oscar-winning actor starred in Zero Contact, a film released via NFTs last year. Now he's looking to buy his first NFT. And Hopkins might not have to hop through a ton of technological hoops to do so, as this week, you can now buy NFTs without crypto. MasterCard partners with NFT marketplaces to make purchasing digital assets more accessible. Amazing. And on top of it all, venture capital is still flooding in according to several other bullish news stories throughout the week, like it has been now for several months. Awesome. Well, that was Crypto This Week with me, Crypto Casey. If you enjoyed the episode, please make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell notification to stay up to date on all of the latest videos. So what do you think about the Federal Reserve's actions? Are they going for a 50 or maybe a 75 BP hike next week? How far into this bear winter are we? And for how much longer? Let me know in the comments below. Be safe out there.